Hey everybody, Movie Review Next Door here, and I'm back on another review. And just before I get to the video, I got my uh, Rambo La Raft for Life shirt. Loving it. Love the logo. <laughs> just wanted to show it off. Um, I'm continuing the Cube series. <laughs> And from memory, well, it's Cube 2 Hypercube, which is the only other Cube movie I have on DVD. I don't have Zero or any of the others. I don't even know if they have a Blu-ray. That's surprising. You'd think with how big of a movie Cube is, like not as much the sequels, but Cube is itself, you'd think there'd be like a trilogy Blu-ray with like a bunch of special features, maybe interviews with the cast. I mean, the cast aren't doing too much, most of them. Um, it's a horror thriller film from 2002 directed by Andre, Andrei Sekula, I think. And it stars Carrie Matchett, Geraint Twin Davies, Gracelyn Kung, Matthew Ferguson, Neil Crone, Barbara Gordon, and Lindsay Connell. In this film, eight strangers awaken with memory in a puzzle. things in it but overall this seems like a very pointless sequel in that it doesn't continue anything from the first film and it doesn't really do enough of its own shit and when it does it just ends up halting itself a lot of the time and i will talk about the good but uh let me get to the cast first carrie matchett plays kate fillmore um i think she's a uh doctor or something because she's like kind of doctoring people um she's she does a decent job i've seen her in a lot of things she was in code eight she was in cypher which is another vincenzo natale film um apparently she was in a family of cops too which i think there was an actor from the last film that was in family of cops three um Oh, yeah, she was in Psycho Mother-in-Law or Mad Mom, that Canadian TV movie I watched that was kind of funny. Uh, she was all right in that. She's mostly known for a show called... Um, uh, 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 um, with Piper Parabo. Covert Affairs. She's mostly known for that in America. She does a decent enough job. I think she works as a lead, even though she doesn't do a lot. Geraint Wynn Davies plays Simon Grady, who's this detective who's, like, in the cube looking for this woman, which that kind of goes nowhere. Um, this actor, I recognize him. I haven't seen this movie, but I know he's in American Psycho 2 with, uh, freaking uh, Mila Kunis. He's in multiple sequels. He's in American Psycho 2, Cube 2, uh, Trilogy of Terror 2, which I've never seen. Uh, yeah, poor guy gets stuck in all the sequels. But uh, he's okay here, but he goes way over the top way too quick. And I'll mention how this is basically a poor copy of a character from the first film. Uh, Grace Lynn Kung plays... Sasha, um, she's a blind girl who we learn has more to her um, as the film goes on. I recognized her from Cult of Chucky. She's the girl that gets uh, decapitated by the uh, glass ceiling. I remember that. Um, here, she doesn't really do much, and when you find out what her character is... Uh, She'll seem really stupid for doing so. Matthew Ferguson plays Max Reisler. He's a computer programmer. Uh, he's 
not great. He's one of the worst actors in the film. Neil Crone plays Jerry Whitehall. He, we find out later, designed the doors of this cube. Um, but didn't know what it was doing, what they were going to be used for, which kind of happened in the first film. It's a scene kind of lifted from the first film. He's fine. Barbara Gordon plays Miss Paley. This character was an Izon operative and apparently just has dementia or something because she randomly gets like she randomly like recount conversations she had or like talk about her dog and then she goes on oh it's a tesseract so it's a very plot convenient character and Lindsay connell plays julia who's basically just the hot one and she's got this like ada wong type dress like, I was watching this with a friend, and my friend fucking said, like, oh, yeah, it's the Ada Wong character. And I'm like, you know what? It, she does, she, I mean, she's white, but she has, like, basically an Ada Wong style dress. And I couldn't, I mean, she's ba basically useless. She's like a lawyer who turned out to defend, to be defending eyes on at some point. Let me get to the first thing that kind of just immediately, just as soon as you start the movie and realize what's going on in this hypercube. None of the doors have numbers. So, and, and also, uh, along with that, this cube does not follow any spatial rules. So, you've basically got a cube where there's no way to escape, and by the end of the film, we find out the only way to escape is to wait for it to implode on itself. And that 100% rips a lot of the tension that could have happened in this. Because in the first film, you could say, oh, it's a really hard situation they're put in. But a character does end up making it out. Meaning that it was able to be, like, you know, solved. So there's like an op actual point to it if they are using it as like a torture device or if they're using it for research, whoever is outside of the cube, because you never really got a look at that in the original. You could say that it's them using humans as test experiments for these traps or the cube itself as like a kind of a murder device or like some type of punishment. Here... There's no real purpose to it. When somebody ends up making it out alive... Well, spoiler alert. The character that does make it out alive is... Kate, who turns out to be a... An agent for Eyes On. And she was sent in there after Sasha, who turns out to be Alex Trusk. Who was the creator of this hypercube. To take this flash drive that she has around her neck and then they end up just shooting her in the head and then the movie's over so basically the entire movie feels pointless because we never know what's on that drive and it's supposed to be this shocking twist but i don't care enough like again the characters in the first film may not have been super complex but they were at least somewhat likable most of these characters, like, our main character is such a do-gutter that I just was like, okay, this character isn't realistic at all. And, again, the character that I cared the most about in the first was, um, freaking Levin, uh, played by Nicole DeBoer. And this character may be trying to be like Levin in some way, but she doesn't really come across as it. She doesn't have a lot of really quippy dialogue. The dialogue in this is fucking horrible compared to the last film. The last film had some really, like, kind of shoehorned in lines. Like the one about, I bet you beat your kids to... Uh, there there are some really... Oh yeah, the is that your, uh, is that your two cents worth? Worth? for what it's worth like i'm not a fan of some of the lines but for the most part the dialogue was quippy enough that i was like okay this is like fun it's like going along the pace is really good here the pace is very slow at times it takes about an hour into the film to get more than one trap because 
mainly the traps you have here are this thing comes across the walls and keeps moving for a bit. And it, if you get caught in it, you rapidly age. There's one that, like, comes out of the wall, like, multiple pillars come out of the wall and, like, can decapitate you. And the third one that I recognized was the, the or realized was a trap was the one where there's this cube thing that keeps like multiplying and then it starts chasing around the room and it it's mimicking your movements. So I bet basically you just have to stand still and then it'll go away. So even though it contradicts that multiple times and the CG isn't amazing, but okay. One thing I will lay off on, a lot of people say the CGI is terrible in this. I wouldn't say it's terrible, given what the budget of this 100% was, which was no more than four times the original budget, so around 1.2 million. The CGI is fine. This film doesn't do the CGI any favors, though, because everything is so brightly lit. Because this cube has to be bright white, because they're trying to do this different thing. But then again, the bright white, again, in the original, everything was kind of low lit, lit by colors. So you had a d different looks for different feels of the film. Again, a lot of the more intense moments happened in darker colored rooms. Nice, subtle metaphors or nice, subtle, like uh, visual storytelling. And then in this film. Oh, yeah, and whenever there was CGI, which there were a few CG shots, they looked good because they didn't overuse it. Even at the end, the bit where the blood starts running down looked all right. Here, even though I don't think the CGI is terrible, it's a step down, even though the budget is significantly higher. And the every room being bright white, I do think, takes away from some of the suspense of the film. Because, not because you could barely see in the original, but there was moody lighting. Here, everything is brightly lit, so everybody can see literally every part of everybody. There's no shadows, really. It's, And the movie ends up looking very stale really quick. The way the first film got away with using the one set over and over was the colored lights. So they could actually shoot it in a way where you could have characters coming in and out of the holes or whatever. But they edited it in the way where it looked like it was a bigger, a bigger thing. So, and again, the visual effects in the first film were very impressive, especially given the really low budget. Meaning, you had a lot of very talented people working on it. Here, I'm not saying they're, the people aren't talented, but they're putting the talent in the wrong places a lot of times. And again, the cube this time around isn't horribly constructed, but it does look a bit simpler than the first film. And I do 100% like the first film's cube a lot better. And again, that one is actually solvable. This one really isn't. So, yeah, it, it, the, oh yeah, what else? Oh yeah, Draywin Davies' character, uh, Simon, is basically supposed to be Quentin from the first film, and Quentin, his big thing was he slowly got more and more, turned more and more into kind of a villain, or an antagonist for the other characters, um, because he starts going crazier and crazier given his stressful situation, and then he ends up killing somebody, and then it keeps going and going. And they try to do this with Draywin Davies' character, Simon, but it's not well done at all. Uh, he's... The first thing he does is hold our main character at knife point when she's trying to check to see if he's alive. Which, like... Oh yeah, that's a normal fucking thing to do. I know this isn't the best situation, but you're holding her at knife point. Also, why the fuck does he have that knife? That's another thing from the first that changes here. In the first film, we only had essential... Th the characters only had essential things in order to help them forward in the cube. Um, Levin had her glasses. A character... Um, uh, oh yeah, they had buttons in order to keep their saliva going. The bare essentials 
of what they need. And they weren't given belts so that they could hang themselves. A character in this has a belt. He tries to hang himself to get out of the cube, which like would defeat the entire point of throwing them in this type of thing. Uh, a character, again, fucking Simon has a knife for some reason. I don't know why. And, oh yeah, he ends up using the knife to kill multiple people. Uh, a character has a watch, which that at least factors into it. There's a character with a pen, which I'm like, the entire thing was that you didn't have that, so you had to find interesting, creative ways to write. So it was just kind of odd. Um, but yeah, it that just seemed like a weird change. Uh, you have characters that are very specific. They're 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 just so convenient. They have this like this like physicist character who's dead, who is there for a to have all of these things written out on the walls about him trying to figure out the cube and this number six oh six fifty nine, which turns out to be very obviously to me at least because a character keeps fiddling with his watch and has a bunch of watches on his arm later is the time the cube is going to exp implode or whatever. Um, and he, he, he like, solved all this shit and found the number. Oh, yeah, and he gives them a jump scare when they try to check on him. Which is, like, the original film did not have, like, shitty jump scares in it. It actually had genuine suspense and tension, especially the trap where nobody can talk. Like, that was an insanely effective scene. Um, oh, what else? Oh, yeah, the ending. I I mean, I already said what happened in the ending. Fucking Kate turns out to be a an agent for Eyes On. There's a lot of really bad hiding of twists that come later. There's a bit where they they show the outside of the cube, which my issue with the first film's ending, again, Spoilers for the ending of the first. I mean, if you're watching the a review for the second, you've probably seen the first. So, spoilers for the first film. At the end of the film, we don't get to see what happens on the outside of the cube. We get what people remembered, the last thing they remembered before uh, being knocked out and thrown in the cube. So, we don't even know what time this is set in. And I think at the end of Cube 1, it would have been nice to see the outside of the cube. Here... This is while they're still inside the cube, showing the outside world, which is supposed to be... Th these characters are supposed to be from different places, uh, and a lot of them have accents that aren't from those places, which I know it's a nitpick with a movie like this, but they did give specific states, even though this is a Canadian production, and all of these actors, most of them at least, are Canadian. I think. Um, But... Carry match at 100% is Canadian. But they show the outside, and when they get to Sasha, they show an empty bed, meaning that there's going to be a twist with her, like, very obviously, and she's, like, useless for most of the movie, and then she randomly says, I'm Alex Trusk, I created this cube, I escaped into it because uh, people were trying to uh, kill me, and I went to the one place they would never dare chase me, inside here, and... Just a lot of these characters are so fucking annoying. Oh yeah, there's the 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 like nerd character who's basically useless, and the hot woman, the Ada Wong impersonator or cosplayer. Um, they end up fucking to death. That was. That's like the one thing a lot of people know about this sequel is that they, fuck to death, in zero gravity. I don't know. But with all that said, there are some things I enjoy about this film. Again, Carrie Matchett, I don't think, does a bad job in the lead. She's not as good as anybody in the first film, or as interesting as a character. But I do enjoy her acting. Um, the direction and cinematography by Andrea Secula are pretty great. He didn't direct a lot. He mostly was a cinematographer, and he was a cinematographer on, funnily enough, uh, Geraint when Davies was in American Psycho 2. He was the cinematographer on Psycho, American Psycho 1, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, um, 
Trust, which was an okay movie, but I thought it looked all right. Four Rooms, the Tarantino... Uh, it had four directors, but Tarantino and Rodriguez were two of the directors. Vacancy, which I remember quite enjoying. I would definitely like to go and see that again. Um, but yeah, like... Worked on some pretty well-regarded movies, especially Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs. So yeah, the cinematography in this tr is one of the things trying to keep the film looking interesting. And also the score by... Um, the musical score by Norman Ornstein isn't as good as the first film's score, but it is still pretty good and pretty nice to listen to. But overall, would I ever really watch this again? No, unless I was watching it with friends. I did watch it with friends today. So we could, like, comment and kind of joke about certain things. I was still paying attention, but... it It's just not that great of a movie. I remember Cube Zero being a lot better, so I hope that's still alright. But yeah, that was my review of Cube 2 Hypercube. If you've seen the film, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you have any recommendations, put them down there as well. And uh, movie reviewer next door, out.